Hey, my name's Seb and welcome to episode one of my Python mastery course for complete beginners. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to install Python, how to set up your own development environment, and then we're going to learn about the print function. We're also going to learn about data types and variables. And finally, I'm going to show you the operators in Python. All right, let's go. All right, so let's install Python on Mac. Go to python.org and when you get to the website, click on downloads and you'll see the latest version of Python that is stable. So we are at Python 3.11 as per the time of this video. So we're gonna go ahead and click that and you'll see it is downloading in the bottom left corner now. All right, our download's finished. So we'll just click on the package here and it's popped up. We got our installer window. Basically all you have to do is just keep clicking continue. We'll continue through this, that, agree, find a destination, Mac HD, that works for me and install type in your password and you're good to go all right so let's download python on windows now so we go to python.org once again and navigate to the downloads uh, tab you'll see download for windows and the current version is python 3.11 so we're just going to click that that'll pop up here in our downloads folder and it seems to be finishing it is done now open the file Files now opened and we have an installer in front of us. So what we want to do is firstly, make sure you have add python.exe to path clicked and then click install now. And that's all you need to do. So we've got Python installed on either our Windows or Mac now. So what we need to do is download Visual Studio Code, which is going to be our development environment where we actually write our code. Go to code.visualstudio.com. And when you're on the page, go here to the download button and choose the one that fits your system best. So we're on Mac, so we're just gonna download the Mac version. Click that. Here it goes in the bottom. And once it's downloaded, we can get started. All right, so when you first boot up Visual Studio Code, you're gonna see a page like this. It's the welcome page. There is a start area, which shows that you can create a new file, open an existing folder, clone a GitHub repository, or open a walkthrough. Um, there's a recent section. So this shows the recent projects you've been working on. You can just click them to open them up. And there's a left sidebar here, which is quite important. So we have the Explorer. That's where you'll see all of your files and folders that you'll be working with. There's a search and replace area. We have a source control panel, which shows the changes to your GitHub repository. There is a run and debug section, as well as an extension section. So in the extension section, there's uh, many different extensions you can download. Let's say you wanted to change the theme of the Visual Studio Code app. You could download an extension like this. Um, or if you wanted to change the way Excel files look within the app, you can ex install an extension like that. So let's just go ahead and open a new folder. So we'll go to our Explorer here. Open folder. And go to my YouTube folder, Episodes, Episode 1. And let's open that. So we already have a file in here called episode one, but I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that just to show you how to actually create a file. So you have your folder open here. If you expand that, you'll see a couple different icons. You can create new files within the folder. You can create subfolders. You can refresh the Explorer and you can collapse the folders. So what we wanna do is create a new file and we're just gonna call it, um, let's go episode one.py. Now you want it to have the py extension because that's the standard extension uh, ending for a Python file. So it won't run unless it's .py. So we're gonna go ahead and click enter. And there we go. We've got our first file created. All right, we've set up VS Code. Now it's time to run our first Python code. So we're gonna be looking at the print function. So if we type print followed by open and close parentheses, anything that we put inside of these parentheses is going to be printed out to the console or terminal. So this is the terminal on the right. It essentially is an area that when you execute your code or run your code, the output will be shown there. So let's go ahead and print hello world and see what that does. To run your code, go to this uh, arrow, this play button here and click run code. There we go. As you can see, it is printed out hello world to our console. Now the print function is actually extremely important and I use it very often. It's used in high level programming to help figure out where our code is going wrong by printing out certain things that we want. But we'll talk about that more later. For now, just know that it prints out what you put into it into the console. 
All right, now we know the print function. So I want to teach you about the different basic data types in Python. As I said, the print function is a string, and that just means it's a collection of characters, numbers, or symbols. So within the string function, you can also have hello world, but you could also put some numbers in and also symbols and run it and it will still work. Now data types are essentially just different classifications of data that we use in Python. By classifying our data, Python will allow us to do different forms of operations on each specific data type. So we have strings, we have integers, and these are essentially just numbers, but you do not put quotations around integers when you're writing them in functions. So let's say a thousand and we'll print that, see what happens. So we have our two strings printed as well as our integer. Now we have floats, which are very similar to integers, but they are floating decimal points. So let's say a thousand. 0.55 that would be an example of a float and another one I'm going to teach you today is the boolean so this is used for logic there's only two values of a boolean there is true with a capital T and there is also false so these are going to be very important when we come to our conditional statements lesson um, but for now just know that there's true and false and they're used for logic so if we print them out we got true and false now, those are four basic types of data that you can use in Python. There are some others, but these are the ones we're gonna cover today. And yeah, let's move on to learning about variables. All right, now we're gonna learn about variables and these are essentially just containers where we can store our data types and we can reference these containers based off of the label that we give them. So let's say we had our string, right? We had hello world, but we wanted to save that in a container that we could reference whenever we want. We could create a variable so this is how you do it you put the label first so our hello that's what we're going to just call it and you'll see that we used full lowercase and between each word there is a underscore that is just python conventions to keep it underscored and fully lowercase now we make a space and set that label equal to the string of hello world so essentially what we're doing is taking hello world and we're making this label equal to it so when we reference the label it'll spit out hello world. So let's go ahead and try that. So print our hello. And you'll notice that I'm not using any quotation marks here because if I was, it would just print the string our hello, but this way it's actually referencing that container. Now let's go ahead and try this out. And you'll see it prints hello world twice, once here and once for printing our variable. So I'll just delete the top one just to show you that it works. And there we go, we still get hello world. Now, this does not have to be named our hello. This could be named whatever you want. Um, generally, you just want to do something that makes sense for the data that's in it. But just for this example, I'm just going to put rhino equals hello world and I'll print rhino and it will still result in the same output. So let's go ahead and try that and we get hello world. Now, you don't just have to put strings in your variable. You can put any of the other data types. So let's let our number be equal to 123 and we're going to print our number below this should also work yep as you can see 123 is printed we can also do our float so 123.55 and we'll print our float below we get that working as well and lastly let's just try out the boolean so our bool equals true now you'll remember we have a capital letter uh, at the start of true or false so we can make it even false and print out our bool. Now we have four different variables that we can reference whenever we want. We can even print them out twice. So they're repeatable. Let's print out our bool twice. So we'll get false, false at the end. So that's it for variables right now. That's how you create and store containers of data. And now we're gonna finish off the video by looking at arithmetics. Right, so let's now learn about the arithmetics and operators you can use in Python. As I said, the data types are classifications and they allow for different operations on each. And I'll show you what I mean by this. So let's start with the string. I've changed it back to our hello and it's equivalent to hello world. So when we print our hello, we'll get hello world in the output. Now there's a couple things we can do with that. We can actually use addition on the string. So let's do print our hello plus our hello and see what happens. So we get hello world, hello world, we get it twice. Now, if we wanted to put a space between the two, what we could do is put our hello plus space plus our hello again. So it's essentially taking hello world 
adding a space and then adding our hello to the other side. So let's see what happens when we run this. And there we go, we have our space. Now we also have subtraction, but it will not work with strings. So let's just put subtraction here and let's see what happens when we try to subtract one from our hello. So this will be hello world minus one. And we come across our first error. Now errors are not a bad thing in Python. They tell us exactly what's going wrong. So here we're going to get a type error, which just says that you cannot use subtraction between strings and integers. So we're gonna delete that because we know that is not possible, but we'll come back to it. Another thing you can do is multiplication. So multiplication. Now let's go ahead and print our hello times two and see what happens there. So once again, just as we did in addition, we have our hello printing two times. If we change this to three times, we get three hello worlds. Um, and now if we wanted to space here, what we'd have to do is use the uh, addition as well and go our hello plus space. And we could put these first two ones in brackets. So that means it'll turn our hello into hello world with a space at the end and then times that by three. So if we print that, we get hello world three times and the spacing is correct. Now we have division, that's another operation in Python. So what happens if we print our hello divided by two? Once again, we come across another type error. So that is not possible. We are not allowed to use strings and integers and divide them between each other. So we can delete that because that doesn't work. We're gonna move on, we have power. So let's say two to the power of two is four. Now what happens if we print our hello to the power and power is done by using two stars rather than one, which is used for multiplication. I'm actually just gonna quickly add these symbols beside them here. So that, that, power is two. And let's see what happens when we do our hello to the power of three. It doesn't happen because you cannot times hello world by hello world. So this is the same as doing this and this is not possible because there's nothing to multiply it by. So we'll delete power and the last one is modulo and we'll talk about that when we come to it but the symbol for that is a percentage sign. So now that we've done strings let's move on to integers. So for integers we can of course add them together so if we print 100 plus 100 we should get 200 and we do. We can subtract inter integers, of course, the same way. So if we did 100 minus 100, we should get zero, and we do. We have multiplication, that of course works for integers as their numbers, so 100 times two, let's get 200 again. And division, of course, works. So 100 divided by five should be equal to 20, and we get that. But you can see that it's actually a float now. So division converts our integers into floats. And we'll move on to power. So let's print five to the power of five. Whoop, there we go, five to the power of five. And we get 3,125. So it works for integers and it keeps them as integers. And the last one, which we can now talk about is modulo. So modulo is a bit different. What it does is it divides the two numbers and then gives you the remainder. So what do I mean by that? Let's print modulo 10, sorry, 10 modulo two. So two divides into 10 equally. So we should get zero here and we've received zero. And lastly, let's try out now with 11 divided by two because two does not go into 11, but it does go into 10. So that means the remainder is going to be one. And there we go. We get the remainder of that division. So all of these operations uh, with integers work the same with floats. So if we were to do print 100.5 plus 100.5, we'll get 201 and it'll be a float. Subtraction works the same, 100.5 minus 100.5 is equal to 0, 0.0. Multiplication of course works, so 100.5 times two should be 201. There we go, we get it up here. And division, 100.2 divided by 10, we get 100.02. Power works the same. 201, oh, that's not power, that is multiplication again. We get 10,125 as the decimal place. And power works just fine as well. So 100.5 to the power of two. Power works just fine as well for this. So print 
100.5 to the power of 2. We should get a very big number, 10,100.25. And modulo will also work. So print 11.5 modulo 2. As you can see, once again, 2 goes into 10 and leaves a remainder of 1.5. So we will get 1.5 here. Now let's go ahead and remove all of this because I'm going to show you how you can do operations on Booleans and what comes out of them. So I want you to kind of think here, what do you think happens when we print true plus one? Well, let's clear our console log here and try it out. We actually get two. Let me delete this hello world as well. So we actually get two because in computer talk, true is equivalent to one. So this function turns true into one. So essentially what we're getting is one plus one, which is equal to two. Now what happens if we do false plus one? So false is actually equal to zero. So that's gonna be turned into a zero and we can see that because it prints out one. So zero plus one is one. We can do the same thing for subtraction. So if we wanted to print, let's say 100 minus true, that's equivalent to 100 minus one. So if we print that out, we should get 99. And if we were to do 100 minus false, that's 100 minus zero. So it just stays at 100. This works the same for all of the different ones. So multiplication, division, power, and modulo will also use, and it will convert false to zero and true to one. So I want you to go ahead and try all those. And that's about it for arithmetic there. So yeah, there we go. I hope you liked the first episode of the Python Mastery course. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps my channel a lot. And yeah, stay tuned for uh, part two coming out soon. Thanks for watching. See ya.